So the third objective, um, the quality of the public realm. And again, referring back to the Cool War, lots of examples there of what, what is most horrible about some of the environments that are, that are uncool is the, the degradation of, of the public realm. It's not so hard, actually, to achieve high-quality public realm. W one of the difficulties is that there's nobody to pay attention to it. There's, nobody who care there's no obvious person who cares. In the case of Kensington High Street, um, illustrated here, um, a sort of an admired uh, public realm project of the last few years that's you know, generally accepted to be a great success. There was actually one person, uh, as I understand it, who was sort of instrumental in making it happen, a, a, a councillor of Kensington, Chelsea, who, who took, Councillor Moylan, who took it upon himself to sort of drive this project through in the face of some objections because you had to ignore some of the prevailing rules about uh, or, or um, uh, orthodoxies about pedestrian safety and, and make the case that actually by mixing up um, traffic and people and cycles and so on um, without barriers, you actually um, improve safety for everybody and make people behave more like uh, human beings. And, you know, again, if you haven't seen this, it's definitely worth a visit because there isn't that much to it when you go there. But it's, uh, and a lot of the success was achieved by actually leaving things out rather than, rather than by, uh, by adding things. So the next objective, ease of movement, and by this we mean mainly uh, ease of movement for pedestrians. And with so much of what we're talking about that's, that's gone wrong uh, in urban design in, let's say, the last, well, since the Second World War, um, you know, a lot of it is to do with giving too much priority to the needs of uh, motorised vehicles and not enough to the needs of, um, the needs of pedestrians. And again, putting these things right is all about giving priority to, to people on foot and accepting that actually the person in the car might have to wait for the person on foot rather than the other way around. Um, ease of movement for, for pedestrians happens at a sort of at different scales. It happens at a macro level and it happens at a micro level. If we think about things that block pedestrian movement at a big scale, um, a lot of them are to do, and it go, you know, this is an example of how things are, are interconnected. A lot of them are to do with monocultural uses, such as, for example, very large shopping centres, the way they were built in the 60s and 70s, were all about get, getting people in, and once they were in, not letting them out again. That's still actually the aim of shopping centre developers, but the planning system is more successful at stopping them doing it. Um, whereas in a traditional street network, um, you know, there's, there's a finer grain network that allows people to come and go um, where they want and to cross, um, you know, to cross large uses rather than being blocked by them. And then um, at the more detailed level, um, you know, top right, for example, um, a pedestrian crossing across the street put in a place where it's actually where people want to cross rather than them being shoved off um, 50 metres to the right or the left because it's not thought to be the best place for them to cross. Actually, the starting point should be where do they want to go and allow them to cross in, in, in that location. So ease of movement for pedestrians should be a starting point in urban design, not something that's thought about after everything else has been, has been fixed. The next objective, um, legibility. Can you find your way around? And, and one of the things that we might think about in this respect is landmarks, going back to our example of uh, Clark and Well Green on the left that David used at the beginning. Um, Traditionally, churches at the end of that street, but also pubs seen on the right. Things that you'd naturally use to explain to people um, how, to get, how to get around if they were on foot, if you were giving directions. Again, absent from some of the environments um, you know, created in the post-war period, um, sold as housing estates. If you actually need to direct someone to get from one end of a housing estate to, 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 to the other, what are you going to tell them? You know. Um, if, there isn't a, if there isn't a landmark in sight, it can actually be quite difficult to think of ways to explain to somebody where to go. 